Hi, and welcome to day five of Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week. Yesterday, we heard from Magnus about our lead asset, KL133, its unique mechanism of action, and some very interesting efficacy data that came out of a PMD patient cohort in our phase 1B study last year. This year, we're looking forward to building the evidence on the efficacy of KL133 through a phase 2-3 study that will include adult patients with systemic primary mitochondrial disease who also have fatigue and muscle myopathy. Today, you're going to have a chance to hear from our clinical program manager, Fia Entz, who will tell you more about this important study and what it will feel like to patients who participate in that study. Enjoy. We have an upcoming clinical study to evaluate the efficacy of KL1-3. Can you tell us a bit more about the study? Yes. So we'll be enrolling adult patients suffering from fatigue and muscle weakness, amongst other symptoms, and who have a genetically confirmed mitochondrial DNA mutation. We'll be looking at the effects of KL133 on the patient's fatigue and muscle weakness in hope to improve these symptoms. Patients enrolling into the study will take one pill of KL1333 or placebo twice daily for approximately one year. The study is double blind, meaning that neither us nor the physician or the patient will know whether they're receiving placebo or the active study drug. And this is important to be able to evaluate the actual effects of KL1333 without any bias. The study will run in the US and in a handful of uh, European countries. Okay. Yeah, the, the patients in the study will, among other symptoms, suffer from uh, fatigue and muscle weakness, making it a bit difficult for them to participate in a clinical trial. Uh, how would we facilitate their participation in the study? So we have reduced the number of visits to the site and made sure that most assessment can also be done in the patient's home, meaning that we will offer home nurses to come to the patient's home uh, for three of the eight visits. So in total, there will be five visits to the site uh, during the 64 weeks that the study is ongoing. And we have also developed an app where patients can respond to the questionnaires, which they will do prior to their visits to lessen the burden on the day at site. And in addition to that, we also work with a travel agency that will be available to provide travel to and from the site. So before you can start recruiting patients, what additional activities need to be performed? So at this time, we are working on rather detailed preparations to ensure that we'll capture high quality data during the study. We are submitting applications to the ethics committees, finalizing discussions with regulatory authorities. We're setting up data systems for data capture, and we're training site staff and home nurses in the protocol and the different assessments. Everything to make sure that once recruitment starts, everything will run smoothly.